WNDR. I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. It's good to be back. It's been a long, long time coming. Uh, I'm so happy to be sitting down actually doing this. Uh, we're getting back into our wheelhouse right here. It's like the universe just tossed us a freaking cantaloupe right down the pike. Wow, I didn't realize how long it's actually been. I just looked at the date on our last cast. When is it? 4-15, April 15th. So That's when we recorded. Two, two months almost. Wow, a month and a half. How, how have you guys been able to get along without us? I could tell there's been a d- disturbance in the forest. There's been a disturbance in my forest. <laughs> oh. So um, you, yeah, you had to know it needed to be something special to bring us out. Well, this is this is our this is our bread and butter. It is. On I some mean, whole grain toast. <laughs> <laughs> um so yesterday um some big articles came out, but this has been something that's kind of been in the mix for a couple of years now. I think it's time we set the records. I mean, we'll figure it out. Nobody seems to know what anything what's going on. You come to the right place. We're gonna set you straight, especially for the mascot out there. Who, happy birthday to him, even though he was kind of a dick today on the He's phone. He's a dick every day. Yeah, he was. He was out of line, way out of line there, bub. Maybe we uh, should but, change his name from mascot to dick. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, cheers to you. Happy birthday. Um, and apparently, he said he's gonna he's gonna listen to this, but he's only gonna listen to it to shit on us, which oh, is yeah sort of lame but um dutch what are we talking about what's happening in the world we're talking uh, about we are talking about ufos uaps uh usos whatever you want to call them at this point um unidentified objects flying in the sky aerial phenomena why are we talking about we're talking about because it's a hot topic i mean it's a topic it's a topic we talk about but listen literally every brand of news that you can imagine is covering this story that's how big it is now thank you you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) it's cool that they're doing it it's cool because you know there are things i mean you can think hey guys who cares there's a a hundred different things we could think of we could just rattle off right now at the top of our heads that are covered simultaneously by all news outlets what's interesting about this one specifically is that they're all covering it from an apolitical, non-agendized—is that a word? Agendized with no yes, agenda. Agendized. They're, they're just covering it almost like it's just regular news without, yeah, like, I mean, without an angle, without a caveat. You know what I mean? Which is I, really cool. I mean, literally everyone. You're talking about like every major network, even, even. In a non-biased, non-political way, even Tucker, go fuck yourself, um, choke on some fucking Tyson chicken, you know, Carlson is even talking about and having the same people on his show and uh, and discussing this. So um, we're going to get into, but the, the, the thing that we're really going to get into is we're going to crack the nut as to what's really the possibilities of what's going on. Because Bust I, that I, nut. Yeah, because everything bust the nut open. we're gonna bust this nut all over the place and just <laughs> spread all of the the knowledge we have on this because we've been talking about this for years on the podcast. I've been looking into this for pff, basically my whole life, and um, there are what's frustrating me right now is that all of the yeah, well, we don't really know, and here's what it's probably not. So why don't we talk about what it might be? Um, and we're going to get into that today. Um, so uh, the other reason, uh, why is everybody talking about this in the news? We should probably just brush up on this. What we're not going to do today is going to go into necessarily go into the hardcore specifics of the, uh, like the, uh, the Nimitz, which we've already talked about on this show. Uh, you know, obviously the Tic Tac and, and these things. We're assuming that you guys have some kind of understanding of that at this, at this point, we may talk about the people related to those things. But um, the reason everybody's talking about it now is because uh, in 2017, some footage was leaked and it became uh, a newsworthy item. And because of that, uh, naval officers or naval personnel uh, felt a little bit more comfortable talking about it without being told they're going to be crazy or court-martialed or whatever might happen. And all of that has led to, this is the very short, compacted version, all of that has led to um the advanced um 
research into this um, unidentified aerial phenomena, which could be a national security threat. And now the Pentagon has to deliver a report on all of this information within the next couple of weeks to Congress. So that's why everybody's talking about it. Literally, everybody's talking about it. Do you have something to add to that? No. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Uh, why should we care? Okay. That's a question that got posed today. Um, it's a valid... Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a great question, but I, it, it makes sense. Um, wh- who cares? Who cares? Well, ultimately, the, the reason we care and we need to care is because... Uh, I don't know. Let me make up a story. If you were in your house and say your house is in the rural area... And you have like a yard and all that stuff like that. And you saw something walking around your yard, coming up to your window, maybe bangs on your window a little bit. You go out to your car to get in your, your, your car to drive away and something follows you to your car. You'd want to know what the fuck is in your, on your property, you know, snooping around your place. So when you magnify that to a uh, national situation and you're talking about around our military targets um whatever it is which we'll talk about makes this a national security issue and that's important it's super important um i guess without jumping too far ahead um go ahead i guess get us into this because there's there's it, that kind of got me to the point where I, I wanted to jump into like what it's doing why what it's doing is a threat that kind of stuff so um, timeline it here as far as where do you want to go back to? Do, which, 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 um, well, which event do you want to talk about first? I think briefly we should go back to, cause there's a tie in here, which I kind of want to get to. And the tie in is nuclear energy, nuclear weapons. Okay. And th- these things, these UAP, USO, have often and many times uh, around the world, different countries, have been seen around nuclear activity uh, by humans, whether it be a nuclear submarine, a nuclear uh, naval vessel, uh, nuclear uh, power plant, nuclear uh, weapons uh, silos. That's where these things are often seen. So I think in order to, to say where should we start with this, you almost have to go back to... World War II in the 1940s mm-hmm. and guys like um, General Eisenhower who wrote about the Foo Fighters. Um, there's his own very own writing saying like, these things are out there. They're in the sky. Here's the description of them. Don't know what they are. Could it be Nazis tech? We don't know. It's there. And then that led Roosevelt to um, President Roosevelt to like want to investigate this a little bit more going on into the 50s. And um, then going from the 50s into the 60s, you have what I think is is the beginning of like the great secrecy behind this and the government, like the government denial that there's something going on. And the reason for that is because then we get into the Cold War and we definitely don't want the Russians knowing that we don't know what their tech is or that something might be out there that we don't know how to handle or whatever it is. We and why? Because if. I mean, it's it's common sense. If if we have this Cold War and a lot of it's based on secrecy and and we say that there's this thing going on and we don't know what it is, <coughs> excuse me, and we don't know what it is, um, the Russians would be like, yeah, yeah, that's us. It's totally us. But again, then, yeah, they don't know what it is either. But whatever. But it's it's all spy shit. You know, yeah. it's all James Bond stuff. That's that's the point. So. Yeah, anyway. But you don't, I mean, I, I, I'm maybe a little naive on this. You don't hear a lot about it in the 1900s to 1910s and 1920s, but when nuclear weapons start to come into play. Um, yeah, so, and it's been, um, I've, I've seen a couple things uh, where they've talked that if you like uh, scatter charted the viewing, there have been times when there have been um, sightings, you know, reported sightings, not necessarily near some sort of nuclear event. Sure, sure, sure. But the majority of them are happening um, after we start dropping 
nuclear bombs on um, Japan, when we're uh, detonating nuclear weapons in Nevada, when Russia is detonating nuclear weapons over there. Um, and one of the theories is, is like these aliens, if you're thinking about aliens, could be up there going like, whoa, okay, wait a sec. We were watching these guys and watching them, you know, they're interesting little little chimps as they invent, you know, they figured out fire and now they have little cars, but holy shit, what did they just do? Let's go check out, like, what the hell was that? Now what did they get it? What, now what they get into? It's almost yeah, or, like... Yeah, now they're going to destroy their own planet kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like, like right now I'm down in my basement and my dog is upstairs. I know he's upstairs. If I heard him walking around, I'd be like, okay, I hear him walking around out there. But if I heard some crazy thing, I'd be like, oh, Jesus, now what, now what is he into? Yeah. Well, there's a theory, and it's just interesting, relax. I'm not saying this is what it is, but theory that we're the dog upstairs, and when we detonated a nuclear weapon, the aliens went, whoa, Jesus, now what? Oh, my God. What, what did they just do? Are they going to blow that fucking place up? Yeah. So that increased the sightings because they were looking around going like, oh, God, what are they into? Well, this got me interested in the idea with the whole nuclear thing got me interested in the idea. I said to myself, when was the first nuclear power plant plant uh, created? And it was, I think, 1951. And and it was in Idaho. And then I thought, well, look, what are sightings like in Idaho? Idaho is a hot spot. So again, you know, it's just an interesting correlation. So anyway, to answer your, your initial question, all of that stuff, uh, you know, where do we start? I, I say you start there. And all that stuff leads us up to uh, this present day th stuff that's going on with uh, the sightings around the Nimitz. And, um, and around that time when, uh, this is 2004, I think, yeah. Um, you have uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Henry, Harry, Her Reed. Harry Reid, yep. who's really into this and interested in this. And everybody's kind of saying like, hey, come on, stay away from it. You know what I mean? There's still a, definitely a, uh, something that people don't, you know. It's a stigma around just, yeah, it saying exactly. like, yeah, you're kind of weird if you're into that, you know. Yeah. But he kept pushing for it and he eventually was able to create um, – uh, a research group which led to um, uh, ATIP, right? Yeah. Um, he got some funding. Um, there was some like right wing pushback to this when he did it because he got some funding from this guy. What was his name? Oh, uh, Bigelow. Is it Bigelow? Yeah. Who some owned, gazillionaire. Yeah, hotel gazillionaire who a, a got into aerospace. Uh, uh, design or uh, construction or, or something like that, aer aerospace engineering, and um, ha also had a fascination with it. So that's where he acquired some yeah, of the funding. And was that Bigelow guy? I think he. I think I listened to him. He bought the Skinwalker Ranch, didn't he? Yeah. What's his Bigelow? Is he the guy? Was he on Rogan? Probably. Uh, Big, Bigelow. I don't know if he would do that. Let me look up his picture because the guy. Well, while you're doing that. Uh, I'll also say that also got the whole Tom DeLonge thing looped in, who is the singer for uh, Blink... Was he a drummer? Singer for Blink-182? What is it? The oh, uh, that I don't know. But yes, yeah. I've, I watched a whole interview with Robert Bigelow and and Rogan. What's crazy about that guy is the whole time I listened to him, I was like, how did this fucking guy become a billionaire? He uh, must know a shitload about hotels because yeah. he was kind of a strange cat um yeah. but anyway back to it he ended up donating and being a backer like a cap capital backer for harry reed and his search for the answer yeah um so that that's that guy um and that program a tip is that, and that's what it was called right yeah i i'm not exactly sure what a tip stands for what the uh um the acronym is there do you have that it's, um the name of the program that he initially started was actually yeah it was the advanced aerospace threat identification okay uh program, program. <laughs> so the advanced aerospace threat identification uh program a tip now um, I think that went from 2007 till 2012 okay and then what did it become after that because that's where our guy uh luis uh, Elizondo. Luis Elizondo comes in. A tip S snowballed e into something else. Yeah. Well, no. 
Harry Reid appointed Elizondo to run ATIP. Oh, okay. And he ran it from 2007 until it was shut down in 2012. Gotcha. Um, and that's why this guy, Luis Elizondo, um, is kind of the the most interesting character in this as far as like, hey, dude, what do you know? Because <laughs> right. I, he he is kind of uh, apprehensive to, to to divulge all the secrets. I think just for his own, you know, well being. I mean, he needs to like we were talking about this off air. If he has a security clearance, it's not like he can just divulge everything. He needs to he needs to work. Right, and also I think it's important to say that this Luis Elizondo guy doesn't come from a background of like interest in this stuff. He was a. Um, uh, in the military, he served in Iraq, I believe, Afghanistan, um, and he was intelligence. Is that is that correct? And yeah, I don't know so, what he was doing before, but I mean, he must have been involved with it in some aspect, or he wouldn't have been. Tapped. Yeah, so so they roped him into this. So he has no prior experience and no interest or no like, oh yeah, I want to solve that mystery in it. So he just kind of got thrown into the mix and was like, here's your job. Here's what we want you to research. And in the process of doing that, seeing all this video, hearing all these reports, looking at all the radar, you know, uh, apparently I, I kind of caught him. I watched enough interviews with him that I caught him saying one thing in one interview and another thing in another interview to, in order for me to piece together things that he's not allowed to say in one sentence. And it, it <laughs> and, and as it were, it's kind of like what you just said. He, he m- mentioned that there's much more footage out there that we have not seen. We probably never will see, um, stuff, uh, these, uh, these uh, UAPs are as close to the cockpit as like 50 feet away, you know? So, but one of the things he said that I found really interesting was he's like, let me put it this way. If they had a hammer and sickle on the the craft or a Chinese star on the craft or something like that, um, we'd be spending billions of dollars to immediately find out what this stuff was. So that's, Again, going back to the reason as to why is this important that we figure out what this is, is because it is a national security threat. And you brought up something earlier today when we were talking um, offline about um, an act of war. Yeah. Well, when in 2004, um, it was off the coast of San Diego, um, a couple of F-18s were tasked with like, look, um, this has been going on for a couple of weeks. We've been documenting this for a little while. I know you're in the middle of a training exercise, but we need you guys to cancel that and we need you to go address these things. And the pilots are like, uh, what things? Uh, and they're like, we've got these objects. They're kind of hovering at about 80,000 feet. And then they're immediate, just dropping out of the sky to like a foot above sea level in the blink of an eye and then going right back up. And we'd like you to go over there, fly over there, and uh, see what's going on. And they did. And these F-18 fighters, in very capable by our understanding of technology planes, flew over there. And they were. They, that's what they saw. They saw these smooth, what they call tic-tac-looking vehicles. They're like 40 feet long. And they were dropping out of the sky, sometimes going beneath the surface of the ocean where they could visibly, not just with their their instruments, but actually look out of the cockpit and see water breaking over the tops of these things that were in the water. And then they'd shoot out of there and go immediately up into the sky. They know that it was going faster than 80,000 feet a second because it went so fast that they could barely, I guess they couldn't see it and the instruments only refresh every second. And they went from where they were to 80,000 feet above the ground in that amount of time. So they either disappeared and reappeared or flew up that fast. And these guys are going like, well, okay, that's nothing that we we understand, have an understanding of how aircraft works. There was no heat signature, no wings. Um no propulsion. No, no, no evidence of any propulsion whatsoever. So, and, yeah, again, and this is one of the things we'll get into shortly here about what are these things is that, um, you know, when you start talking about uh, another thing you said, uh, uh, if there was a human being or any kind of biological 
entity as we know it inside that, it would be killed by that kind of uh, G-force uh, just movement. So be like, um, it would be like mushed. So if these are drones of some sort um, that uh, another country is working on, like th- one of the things Elizondo said in one of the interviews was, is like, not only do we not have the technology for something like that now, possibly not even in a hundred or two hundred years, but it it works beyond the the physics that we fundamentally understand. So if we're talking about something that another country's working on, that is some serious shit. It's not just serious shit from a from a threat, as far as from a military threat. We know that technology oftentimes starts with military application, and then it Absolutely. like trickles down yeah, into touch screen. Regular, yeah, regular everyday application for civilians. If you have a vessel, a vehicle, a whatever that can move like that, the commercial applications would be devastating if, if used in a way that where another country could have that technology and we don't. We would be held basically hostage. Just think, you could, they, you know, you know how when you order something on Amazon and then you hit, uh, you hit purchase and you go, ah, oh, fuck, it wasn't Prime. It's coming from China. I'm not going to get that for 30 days. Yeah, you put this in one of those little uh, pills uh, and it's over here. You press uh, purchase and it's on your doorstep in seconds. Well, yeah, it, it's. The, it becomes the problem becomes not the travel it becomes the packaging yeah like someone's got to walk over to the bin and put it in a box and then get it into that vessel because as soon as it's into that vessel they might as well just transport it over you because that's how fast it is i mean that just that in my silly ignorant simple-minded way that that's a a massive threat but then when they these pilots went and approached these vehicles the vehicles started jamming their their instruments, which right. is an act of war, technically. Because that's not technology that we don't have, but if you do that, that's an act of war. So we're approaching vehicles that we don't know what they are. They're moving in a way that we can't compete with or keep up with or understand. And then they jam our frequency and there's nothing we can do about it. That That's pretty goddamn... Uh, peculiar uh it's pretty interesting so i mean i thank god they're not as blatant as having some sort of russian sig like symbology on it or chinese symbology but like i was saying to the mascot earlier our sr 71 who has who has if he is listening to this he tuned out at about 30 seconds in because that's the length of his attention span <laughs> but it's not like when you look at those flying wings, those, uh, what are those? The B, B, oh, the, uh, yeah. B1, B, whatever they are, bombers, mm-hmm. or those SR 71s that are like the fastest plane in the world that can fly at like 80,000 feet. When you look at those, it's not like they have a massive American flag draped over them or they're not painted like a freaking Captain America Marvel spaceship. They're, they're just black and these right. are just white. So just because it doesn't have a flag of some adversary on it doesn't mean it's not from them, which is scary. I don't know what's worse. I mean, think about it. Is it worse that China or, or, or Russia has technology that we even even scratched the surface of comprehending, let alone developing or aliens either way, as far as the United States and national security is concerned, we're fucked. Yeah. So, um, as we transition or as we start to talk about what these things actually are or might be, I, I kind of want to lead this, uh, maybe lead this off by saying that I have a bone to pick with, Uh-oh. with a one Neil deGrasse Tyson. And also I just read another article right before we started this, uh, with another astrophysicist. His name is Thomas, uh, Zerbuchin. Um, I have a bone to pick with him as well. And my bone, my bone is twofold with, with, I'll, I'll just kind of base this on the Neil deGrasse Tyson one who I love, but either, 
I, I listened to an interview with him recently about this topic, and he completely contradicts himself in things he said in other interviews about the possibility of uh, extraterrestrial life. He is saying towards this topic, oh, don't you think that if these were UFOs, uh, alien crafts or something like that, with all the technology we have, with all the satellites we have, with all of the uh, cameras on satellites that we have and stuff like that, that we would have seen them before, that we'd see them all the time. And the bone I have to pick with him is that, first of all, don't, don't belittle us that much. You know damn well that if these things are avoid like barely detectable by ground radar b- from a F-18 that is like 50 feet away from it, that you expect that it's just going to show up on some uh, satellite, Somebody's, you know, some, some Google kid's ta- satellite. Some kid's Tasco telescope in his room. Yeah, it's, it's not, it doesn't work like that. But also, I kind of wonder if Neil knows more, much more about this topic than he's allowed to talk about, so he's misdirecting. I also, I mean, when, when someone says something with, don't you think, no. Or maybe that's his way of saying, yeah, we have tons of, uh, there's tons of evidence of this on the satellites. You know, don't you think? Don't you think we already have that? But like he, I, I felt like it was just a big misdirection with him and I, and I, and I have a bone to pick with him because his logic that he applies to other topics doesn't equate to the logic that he tries to apply to this topic. It doesn't work the same. And he oversimplifies and he waters it down and he dumbs it down. And I have a problem with that. Now, this other guy, this uh, Thomas Zerbuchin, the problem I have with him is it, he said something in the, um, uh, it was a CNN article, I believe. And he was like kind of on the line of like, well, I mean, let's let's not jump to conclusions. It's likely not aliens. It's probably not aliens, and it's not going to be aliens, and da-da-da-da. It's like, I don't understand what the fuck it is about the scientific community that can't pull their head out of their asses, and they will never solve some of the greatest mysteries. I don't it, Whether it's archaeology or, uh, or, or astro, astrophysics or whatever it is, the, there are... There are so many people in there that are so afraid of losing their grants, losing their tenure, whatever it is, they're so afraid to go against the grain. And archaeology is is one of those sciences that has a major problem with that. Because anytime somebody says something that wasn't written previously and has a theory that might be a little bit outside the realm of what we think we already know, they get shunned. They get thrown out. And the- also, though, it, it, along that line is what the, it, the stigma of mentioning aliens is also like become so it's like the antithesis to academics where who cares? I mean, who cares if it is? It is. If it's not, it's not. But in this particular sense, can we all agree that it's something that needs to be looked at and I actually we can. I, I that's a silly question I just said. That's kind of stupid because the whole point of this is we just say, as we led the the show off with is that yes, all the news agencies are are talking about it because people are going like, well Jesus, it might not be an alien, but god damn it, I want to know what it is. I mean, and also I think it's it's great that is happening now because when you look at the past 4 years and the past especially the past last year, um all of the crazy shit this planet has been through and our, uh, um, you know, North American and American culture has been through in this past year. This is like the most neutral topic for everybody to talk about right now without getting canceled or without getting uh, shunned by your family because you don't have the same political ideologies as right. them or whatever it is. This is like the most neutral thing to talk about. And yeah, on- well, the only, well, it is very neutral, but the only thing is, is you're going to have people, like you were saying, um, um, who did you tell me today? You had two people. You had the mascot and... Oh, um, Dr. Moreau? Oh, and Dr. Moreau. Yeah, the three of you, or the four of us, could sit down and have a conversation, but still, if you bring up the word alien... Some people are just going to be completely dismissive of anything you say. And you're like, well, I'm just saying. 
Well, I'm let me just say, you, yo, like, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. If you, if you, if you're dismissive of the idea of aliens, which, which we keep going back to that, and I, I don't necessarily want to do that because we have other theories here as to right. what this may be. But let me ask you this: What's more crazy? The idea that these could maybe these these unexplainable phenomena that breaks the laws of physics could possibly be from another planet is that crazy or is is it fucking crazier than the thought that donald trump thinks he'll be reinstated as president in august what's crazy oh really that's happening in August. oh he's telling everybody that that's what's going on now he's gonna be reinstated they're gonna kick biden out he's gonna be reinstated and then all of the uh, the republican senators who got the boot are gonna be reinstated too that's ah. fucking insane so this is not that crazy folks is my point so anyway, uh, let's get into the possibilities of what this could be. How do you? What do you think about that? Should we do that next? I think that's probably that's probably how we should we should we should we should take it home with that. Well, we'll come. We'll probably end up coming full circle on something as we do this, Johnny. Jenny, we'll come Johnny. full circle, Jenny. Um, I have a couple <laughs> that I wrote down here, and really, when you think about this, it really boils down to about possibly only like five things that this could possibly even be and none of them except for maybe one are uh like good (laughs) (laughs) okay So, so the good one which is probably the most least likely well you know what let me preface this by saying this they're not all the same thing Okay. What do, you mean? what do you mean they're not all the same thing? All sightings are not the same thing. Oh, We've spe- oh, 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 yeah. You could have like five different things and five different sightings and they're all true. Right, Got right. It. So we have specifically been talking about the Tic Tac. There's also the Gimbal and they're, uh, these are the big famous ones right now. The Tic Tac, the Gimbal, and the Triangle, right? Right. Okay, so those in and of themselves might actually be three completely different things. One of those things might be a foreign drone. One of those things might be a UF, uh, uh, an alien craft. One of those things might be, which I think, and I will say here, number one, the least harmful thing is a natural occurrence. Least harmful, probably most least likely too. So we're talking yeah. about ball yeah. lightning or uh, you know something crazy happening in the atmosphere or um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, bioluminescence underwater glowing. All right. Stuff like that. Um, those can be sightings that people see, but they don't really follow the physics that these pilots have discussed and are talking about. Yes. Um, but it is possible that there is something natural going on that we don't know about. I will tie that back in with another idea that I have here in a minute. Um, that's, that's number one. Number two, well, let's just say aliens because we already talked about it. Number two, could this be something from um, another uh, star system? Yes. Why not? We've discussed this many times on this program. Uh, what is the universe? 13.4 billion years old, something like that? Exactly. And Earth is minute. Earth is 4.8, 4. 4. 4. something? 3.8? Yes, exactly. So... Um, we've been around for what, 10,000 years? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So given the fact that we've been around for 10,000 years in the last 100 years of that 10,000 years, we've made all of these, basically we went from a steam engine to an iPhone in like what, 150 years? Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. Where, where are we going to be in another thousand years? Now think if there's another... Uh, civilization out there on another planet that's been around for, you know, a million years. I mean, they cracked the code, you know? So um, it is very, is very plausible that, that it could be alien uh, visitation and people all like Neil deGrasse Tyson going like, well, why, uh, why are they only just flying around the ship and blah, 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 blah. You don't give a shit about an ant farm. An ant hill, like we're just not but that intelligent it, to them. What bothers me about that is like you're trying to put human rationale on something that you don't understand. Like, like the, him going like, "Are you trying to tell me that?" Or you know, I don't see them doing this. Or why wouldn't it? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I also can't explain how they got here if it's real. 
So why are you trying to make some kind of rationale? Like, uh, what's his name? Um, what's the guy's name with the ALS that just died? The brilliant guy with the... Oh, um, fuck. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just wheelchair. Saw him sitting in his wheelchair. Oh, wheels over there. On his tablet. Yeah. Um, so that guy his, was like saying... On his, his whole speaking thing spell. Like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, oh, <geez>. <laughs> Hawkins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hawkins. Uh, straight to hell. Um, his whole thing was like, "Oh, I don't want to meet aliens because if I do, that yeah, you know, it's like they're gonna, you know, that's what people they're gonna be here to destroy us." Like basically, you know, the 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 ship. You see the masts come over the the horizon, and then the ship comes up to shore. It's not a good thing. They're coming here. Hey, to, everybody to, gets to scurvy. Yeah. Well, um, you're you're putting a, a human concept in there you don't know that you don't know anything stop assuming right. by assuming it and and then shutting yourself down to the possibility just because it doesn't fit your line of assumptions is silly which which would bring me to kind of my next one on the list uh this would be i guess number three whatever i'm just kind of going random here interdimensional interdimensional beings now we've talked about dimensions before and I, this is another one that pissed me off about neil degrasse tyson is that he's assuming that uh, it's, uh, 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 you know, within our dimension. It may not be. Maybe the reason that they can zip in and zip out so fast is because they're coming from a fifth dimension into the fourth dimension, into the third dimension and passing through. And we just see what we see when it passes through our dimension. And that's why we have no understanding of what this is or could possibly even comprehend what is in a dimension above us. We don't even know what that would look like. So... Why are they always in the sky, though? That's a question I have. They're not. They? They're they're underwater too. Well, yeah, yeah. I meant like, why aren't they like? It'd be so cool if they were just like on like on, on the ground, Route sixty six, just chilling, just there. Well, there is this correlation with the water. It seems like there's a strong correlation with the well, water because seventy five percent of the fucking Earth is water. Well, then, yeah, there's that too. Um, I watch I watch a show recently though that uh, that went into the, this talk about how uh, they're doing research on the fact that so many of these go underwater that they think that there may, you know, ext- more extreme theories are that there's underwater bases or that they actually stay underwater until they come out. That's where they're that's where they're chilling right now is underwater while they're here on Earth um, because they know we can't find them down there. You go down a hundred thousand yeah, feet, I, I'd, I'd fucking find them. You go I'll down a hundred thousand feet, you're not finding anything. Ah, uh, fuck, I'll find them. Not unless you're James Cameron. <laughs> um, so so interdimensional is is a possibility too, which is not that crazy when you think about, you know, string theory and the theories that scientists have come up with. We we realize that there's probably very highly likely at least thirteen dimensions. Uh, or is it 11? 11 or 13 dimensions in order for string theory to work, which seems very plausible. So again, you can't think like a human about this because there's stuff way beyond us that we don't comprehend. Which brings me to... Um, uh, the. I, I kind of want to circle back to the natural thing. Okay, go you ahead, know, circle back. Circle, I'm going to circle back, Jen Saki. Mm. Um, we talk Girl. about natural if a natural phenomenon we talk about like not to get into the whole ghost thing but when we when people talk about ghosts and spirits and stuff like that so there's a theory that um sometimes ghosts are uh like a broken record we talked about this like a broken record like a time loop record and they just keep doing the same thing over and over again it's like kind of like a, a, a just a time loop a visual time loop so Along the natural phenomena thing that we don't understand, maybe there's some kind of time loop thing going on here that something's just replaying itself. Now, that that wouldn't ex- explain how it's tracking along with our F-18s and blocking their radar and stuff like that. And mimicking their movements. And mimicking their movements, but yeah. But that's but I, only one of those things. But I had, yeah, had to mention it. Now, this was the one... One of the, the, the number four, I guess you'd call it, uh, that I thought about. But actually, when I asked... Um, uh, Dr. Moreau, I said, what's your opinion? What do you think this is? Just flat out, tell me. And she thought, she goes, maybe it's from the future. And I think that's a fantastic idea. It could just be us in the future coming back saying like, hey, don't fuck around with the nuclear weapons so hard. Like we're, we're going to have to guide you at some point. We're kind of dropping hints here. 
but like, yeah, eventually we're going to have to put a halt to this. You know, it could be us in the future coming back. Yeah, like saying like, hey, uh, just relax. And really, that's not such a far-fetched idea when you think about like um, if aliens are coming here from uh, another solar system or another planet, they clearly have an understanding of how to harness the power of uh, black holes or something to create a wormhole, which when you think about wormhole travel, it essentially is like time travel. They're traveling, but they're traveling into the future. You know what I mean? Because in order to tra- travel faster than the speed of light, you're traveling into the future. So the idea, when you push these, uh, multi multiply these ideas and push them together, the idea of time travel is not that crazy. Although, again, with our physics, we only know that time travel can be possible to the future, not necessarily to the past. So that's a tough nut to crack there. Um, uh, there's a... Th- what if... The Earth is 4 billion years old. Okay. And the humans are um, on Earth for 10,000 years. Uh huh. But this is not the first time humans have been on Earth because they were on Earth and then some like cataclysmic event happened and wiped out all the humans. But this, they're actually humans. Um, from the past who had been living on earth in a civilization for 2 million years advancing without being stopped, without having an issue, without destroying themselves. So they have 2 million years of advanced technology and they went into the future and now they see us. Well, again, that's, that's, I, I, you know, to somebody like uh, the mascot who just heard that is going like, you guys are out of your fucking mind. It's really not that crazy. And I'll tell you why. I mean, we all know stories of Lemuria and and uh, Atlantis and, uh, you know, all, all these these supposed futuristic societies that lived within humanity's timeline. Now, you go back three billion years Who's to say, I mean, and this is again my beef with archaeology. Certain things don't necessarily always add up with archaeological finds. They're like, how is this here? Why is this here? How could this even be here? And then they just come up with some like stupid excuse for it and they go, ah, you know, I just, nah. it just happened. But I mean, we only really know of stuff that's like, like the super prehistoric stuff we know about is what, a <clears throat> hundred and some million years? Yeah, and when you think about the uh, Pangea and the shape of the, like, there could have been, we use the term, you use the term humans. They're they're probably not humans. They may be some other biological species that was intelligent. Um, Yeah, whatever. But I mean, like, we we think of like, oh, prehistoric with the dinosaurs, that's 150 million years ago. Well, that only gets us 150 million years. Exactly. 500 million years ago. What and, about one billion years ago? And again, what I'm saying is, is that the Earth's structure was completely different back then. So there are land masses that don't exist anymore, that are buried well under the sea. So we're never going to find the evidence of that. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It's like, but because we can't see it for ourselves, therefore we go like, oh, it just must not have existed. I just thought my idea of of prehistoric people prehistoric beings that were 10 million years advanced than us but then got wiped out wiped off traveling into the future and seeing us as a less advanced intelligent life oh yeah they're laughing at us going like don't make the mistakes we made (laughs) well they're laughing at us going like wait a sec Ah, remember when we fucked around with nuclear they're going like wait what the fuck are we? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> when does that yeah. happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like when um Wait a sec. When uh, H- right. in H.G. Wells the time machine, when he breaks the time machine, he goes way into the future and there's no humans. It's just uh those two species, the ones that live underground and the ones that live above ground. And he's going, "Oh. Uh, like, I can't be here." <laughs> oh, shit. Where have That's my theory. I just came up with it and I'm sticking with it. 
All right, number five is the possibility that this is foreign technology. No, now, I, I just don't want it to be that. I don't want it to be that either because that's probably the scariest of all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I um, so. There, you know, okay, look, somewhere along the way, one of these or two of these or some of these probably is foreign tech, you know, because like we said, not everything is a Tic Tac, not everything is a triangle and not everything is the gimbal. There's other sightings out there. There's other shit popping up on radars, uh, screens and sonar and stuff like that, where we go, oh, mm, we're getting spied on here. Um, case in point, uh, interesting story. Do you know about Battle of uh, Los Angeles? Again, this is, goes back to World War II. The Battle of Los Angeles was a movie about aliens. Yeah, it was based on this. Oh. It was that's where they got the idea for it. The Battle of know. Los Angeles. I thought we talked about this on the podcast before because we've I feel done like, so many episodes. It's... I feel like I put a picture of it in the blog at one point in time. Um, Battle of Los Angeles was um, during during or around World War II. I want to say it was like 1941-42. There were all of these lights. Uh, a fleet of lights appeared in the sky um, off of like Los Angeles, off of like uh, California, off the coast. And the military goes, holy shit, it's the Japanese, it's the Germans, they're coming for us. And they lit up the motherfucking sky through all the artillery they had at it. There's there's pictures of this. You can find, there's, I don't know if there's, uh, I don't know if there's actually any uh, film footage, but there are definitely pictures of the Battle of Los Angeles. They lit up the sky with everything they had, hit nothing, and couldn't explain it. So, and I think that's, that's part of the reason why, um, you know, Eisenhower and, and Roosevelt and all those people got involved in this later because they looked back on that and they were like, what the fuck was that? This is a national security issue. We thought we were being attacked during World War II. I don't even remember that. Yeah, you have to look that one up. Mm. So, um, so yes, there are there is the threat. And again, that goes back to the Foo Fighters too in World War II. Like we were like, holy shit, did the Germans have this technology that we don't know about? So... Some of it could possibly be tech. Um, they know that the Chinese and the Russians, especially the Russians, are working on hypersonic technologies right now. The Russians actually just showed off some of theirs in one of their parades recently because they're bragging about the fact that they're working on hypersonic. But Well, okay, yeah, working on it or like, you know. I mean, dude, there's no way. Uh, look, and that's what Luis Elizondo was saying, to go back to him. He said... There's there's just like, yeah, maybe other countries are working on some of this stuff, but the things that these UAPs have done, there is no way anyone on Earth is that close to that kind of technology. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what this guy, uh, Commander David Fravor was saying, is like this, the maneuverability and what I saw these things do, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. There's, that, that's, his actually, what he said was that, he's like, I don't know what they are, but I sure want to fly one. So, yeah. And so I think we have I think we have a couple more things to discuss here then about this, and that's, um, uh, you know, we talked about some possibilities as to what these might be, but what what does it all mean, and what is going to be in this Pentagon report to Congress? Now, yeah, yeah, okay. I already, I already before the articles came out in the last 24 hours, basically kind of saying what might be in it, I already had this feeling that there was basically going to be nothing in it. Yeah, I, I read somewhere saying like it's basically just going to be an update as to where they are right now. Um, but I don't have much confidence that even if it wasn't an update and it was their final report to Congress... Yeah, so it's not I, this gonna is be much. this is going to be my one conspiracy theory kind of thing for the podcast, and and I've long believed this to be true, is that there is a government within the government. There are certain things that the government doesn't know that the government does. So you, when we talk about we talked about Area Fifty One and. Uh, what was that program that area that uh, Bob Lazar was talking about? I think at Area Fifty One, it was um, Aquarius, uh, the Aquarius uh -huh. Project. Maybe that was pre Bob Lazar, but there was a pro program called the Aquarius Program where apparently 
they were working on technologies back then. It's like, do you, do you think do you really think that somebody sat down there, sat down and explained all that to the Trump administration? No, there is stuff going on within the government that the government doesn't know about and they don't need to know about because when this president's gone and the next president's gone, those programs will carry on in secrecy. So I think not to cut you off, but I think that the Pentagon is going to tell Congress what they need to hear and nothing more. I just have this vision of a bunch of very intelligent, just physicists, astrophysicists, just nuclear physicists, just the, the smartest of the smart, sitting down with Trump and just arduously trying to get through a fucking conversation with him. He's like, oh, what are you saying? Are you trying to tell? No, that's not what we're saying. And then... They think like, oh my God, thank God that motherfucker's out of office. All right, who's the next guy that we got to try to explain this to? And then they sit down with Biden. And they're like yeah, trying right. to explain shit. And he's just sitting there not getting it. And these guys are like, all right, can we get somebody who's not a hundred years old? Like, so Bi- Biden's like, uh, so you're telling me that uh, <coughs> that corn pop was in a zipper yeah, yo, flyer. And-, and they're like, what? And then, and it, but yeah, but then they'd be telling it to Trump and he'd be like, uh, could we swallow the Clorox? If we drank the Clorox, would it like? Oh my God! I'll, <laughs> uh, I want to meet the Green Man. Yeah, seriously. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, but you know, you made another point just now, and it's another thing that's kind of frustrated me about this whole thing. So this Pentagon stuff is going to come out, and you have all these know-it-alls, whether it be that guy Mick West in the video yeah. that uh, the, the 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 mascot just sent us. Uh, or this Thomas Zer Buchin, or even Neil deGrasse Tyson. You have all these know-it-alls who know they know what it isn't. But nobody's sitting down and saying what it is. And the thing that frustrates me about it is, is that you and I are morons. We're fucking idiots, okay? I don't know. I barely know how to, how, to, how to ride my motorcycle anymore, okay? Like, I don't even know how to drive a car, right? That's as far as I go. I don't know the first thing about flying an F-18. And, but I promise you, somewhere... In, in, in ATIP or one of these groups that's studying this, some group in the Pentagon that's studying this, there are um, astrophysicists, engineers, high-minded people who understand physics and are looking at this going like, it is definitely not a Chinese drone. It is definitely not this. It is that we can rule this out. We can rule this out. We can rule that out. We might not know exactly what it is, but they're ruling a whole lot of shit out. I promise you that. One of the interesting things I heard in an interview, I don't remember if it was a David Commander Fravor interview or what, but their biggest thing was saying that it isn't U.S. technology, is that once you've been in the military or been in the government for like 20 or 30 years, like these guys who are senior people, old heads, if you will, they're like, people just can't keep a secret that long. Like someone's right. going to talk. Someone's going to be a blabbermouth. Someone's going to say something. And he's like, when you're talking about the technology of the, sh- the way these ships are flying, nobody has said anything ever. Like nobody got drunk and went to a, a bar and was like, oh, you think that's something? You should have seen this shit I saw last Thursday. You know what I mean? Like nothing. Well, it's interesting you should say that though, because I know, because uh, I saw an old, some archival footage today about uh, the whole Bob Lazar thing. And there are people that worked at Area 51 around that time who would hang out in bars in, in that part of uh, uh, New Mexico and get drunk and people would come in there and try to ask them questions. I think that there's a great fear amongst certain people that if they do speak out, they'll be offed or ruined or their families will be ruined and Look stuff at Jason, like that. Jason Bourne. Yeah. So, I mean, there that's l- less unbelievable to me than the I fact know, that but you know that there's some guy trying to get his dick wet. And then he's not thinking straight. So he's drunk, he's trying to impress some girl and the and that CNN's on and yeah, you, you think that's cool? <laughs> let me tell you what I just saw last Thursday. And she's yeah. like, "Oh my god, I'll suck your dick." He's like, huh, "Let me yeah. tell you what I saw the Thursday before that then." Yeah, you know and he's telling the girl who goes, anything you say is $50. Yeah, or she she's doesn't care. saying that with a Russian ask- accent. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know? But so, so again, I, I just think that, you know, there's, 
there's more to this than you and I are, are going to know. But what I do like about this is that be, because of the bravery of people like Luis Elizondo who quit his job in order for this to get, you know, he said he said the only way that his superiors would pay attention to him is if right. he quit his job and put it in his resignation uh, uh, letter. And it worked. And then, you know, some people leaked this footage in 2017. Right. That helped. So we're getting to a point now where it's less um, of a uh, faux pas or whatever you want to call it to to actually talk about this th- this topic. And I think we're getting closer, especially with everybody having a, a camera and, and stuff like that, that um, we're getting closer to – I'm not saying we're getting close to disclosure, but um, – there, I think the government's having a harder time keeping this shit on the wraps. And also, to your point about um, them basically admitting that it's not our tech, that's a big admission because I think that in them saying it's not our tech is also them admitting that they know it's not foreign tech. Because we're not going to sit here and go, it's not our tech, and let the rest of the world know we're nowhere near your shit. But what if they're lying? I mean, they could be, but... Like, what um, if they're saying, like, hey, what me? And they're like, I saw you. I looked in your face. Hey, what me? And, like, they're just denying it. And and it, it is us. That'd be I good. Mean, that'd, be, that'd be gangster. But then that, that confirms my my conspiracy theory about uh, parts of government not knowing about other parts of government. Yeah, I mean, that's been the whole thing. People have been saying that since Lazar was saying that they were one of the fundamental flaws and when he was doing research, if you believe it, at Los Alamos, or is it Alamos? Or uh, S4, Area S4 of Area 51 or whatever, Site S4, of, Site 4 of Area 51, um, is that one of the fundamental flaws was was the over compartmentalization and that went against the that scientific method of comparing results with all different aspects but they wouldn't allow them to do that because they needed to keep everybody on a strictly need to know basis which was impeding the advancement of the research if it's ours ours on ours why would they day in, day out, for years on end, fuck around with our own military with the possibility of them causing some kind of major issue? They said that um, that was one of the things I saw in one of the interviews as to why they said it's not ours was because they were like, we simply don't do that. We simply don't run drills on our own military without letting them know because it is far too dangerous. Um, someone could get hurt, someone could get injured, we could lose millions of dollars worth of equipment. You just simply don't do that. And 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 that's why they another reason why they said it's not ours. Oh, you would fuck around with another country if you had something that technologically advanced before you'd fuck around with your own. I would. Yeah. So I mean if you were Tony Stark, wouldn't you take your Iron Man suit over to fucking uh Azerbaijan or whatever and uh, fly it around since nobody could fucking stop you and nobody could do anything about it and then go home. I mean, yeah, you're not you're not going to do it to your own kind. Not, not, yeah. Yeah. And possibly cause some kind of major catastrophe. Valid point. Off the coast of San Diego. Yeah, you're not going to do that. Valid point. You know, that could start a fucking war. Um, but... But again, so, I mean, look, when we boil this thing down, no, you didn't ask my opinion, but you're going to get it. I don't think it's foreign tech. I mean, it, when I say this, I mean, like, the major things we're talking about, which is essentially the Tic Tac. Um, I'm not talking about every sighting ever. But I am saying that this particular one, I don't think it's, I don't think it's natural. So you can take that off the list. I don't okay. think it's foreign, so you can take okay. that off the list. All right. Which really only leaves interdimensional, alien, or future past. All right. I mean, what else could it possibly, possibly be? 
but beyond those those things i <sighs> even though you made a great point about our own military fucking with us it's a great point it definitely throws a wrench into what i think but man if i you know gun to my head man i just don't know there's so i could i could see it going any way i'm not going to i'm just not going to hitch my wagon to one idea because there's just so many valid reason, valid explanations for what it possibly could be that aren't any crazier or lamer than the others. Like that that's why I get not to cut you off, but that's why I get so irritated when these articles come out and they base the article around going like, well, we don't think it's aliens. We don't think it's aliens. Well, you but you're also not saying it could possibly be aliens. Like well, this this article that I I sent you from the post did that. Yeah, they did. They did actually say that. It could they possibly. did a good. They did a good job. They said, um, "Oh Jesus, where'd it go? Where'd it go?" Um, Washington Post. Oh, I got to go back because I I had gone to a different article. Let me see oh, there if it I is. can. It says it right here. U.S. Intel reports on UFOs. No evidence of aliens, but and then the article says. Whatever or whoever they are, they're still out there. U.S. intelligence is after them, but it, its upcoming report won't deliver any full or final truth about the U.S. UFOs. It says that. What did I read? That it says. Here, investigators have found no evidence the sightings are linked to aliens, but they can't deny a link either. Right. Okay, well, exactly. Well, he, okay, so here's what that, I, I have the, the quote from the Thomas Zerbuchin, this, you know, dumpster fire of an astrophysicist. <laughs> Jesus, you really hate this guy. I do. He says, during a pre press briefing on Wednesday, Thomas Zerbuchin, an astrophysicist and NASA's associate administrator for science, indicated he does not believe the UFOs are evidence of technologically advanced alien civilization. People, and I quote, people tend to underestimate nature. Nature is an amazing place where a lot of miracles happen. Miracles? Get the fuck out of here with your miracles. And uh, once That's a dumb, that's a lazy excuse. Yeah, it's, it's what I'm talking about. And once we understand, it's like, why didn't we think of that, he said. Zerbuchin in, is a dumpster fire. Yeah, in the realm of science, we're all about unidentified issues and objects. So using the tools of science, we will do whatever we can to move our understanding forward. You're fired. You're fucking fired. Go back to Fire school. Him. Go Fire learn him. something. Fire him. Yeah, and again, I'm not saying it's aliens, but you can't sit there and say it's not aliens, it's natural. Get the fuck you don't you you don't know what you're talking about, bro. A natural phenomenon dropping out of the sky from 80,000 feet to one foot above sea level, sometimes going under the underwater, jamming the radar, which a natural phenomenon could do that, but then also mimicking the movements of the fighter jets. And then like, and then the other thing that they did that they don't talk about in the article, but you hear about in the, in the um, uh, interview is that, so these fighters had a, a training mission basically on their computers where they were going to different points. They would, you know, complete an objective, then fly to a different area and then complete an objective and fly to a different area. This thing was actually going to those objectives before the planes were. Right. So how did it know that? Oh, so that was a ball lightning. Yeah. Right. So anyway, I, I, I don't know. I honestly, think that there's no reason to believe that my theory about prehistoric intelligent life from 500 million or longer ago, 500 million years or longer traveling to the future. There's no reason to believe that it's not that any more than there's no reason to believe it's not aliens or that it's, it's foreign technology. There's no way of knowing. We don't know. 
Right. Well, hopefully we will. And that's the point of all this research. Um, that's one of the famous pictures I just sent you there of uh, Holy shit. Battle of Los Angeles. Um, what are they shooting at? <laughs> that's, that's what they wanted to know. They didn't know what they were shooting at. Now, granted, some of that could be, um, uh, what do you call it, exploding in the air. Uh, artillery shells or something. Looks like a fucking flying saucer is what it looks it like. It looks like a flying saucer. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's the whole basis of this and that's why we're talking about it and that's why it's so fascinating is that we feel like we're inching closer to understanding that it is important to actually research this for the sake of possibly national security. 100% for the sake it's it is for the sake of national security if not for national security for economic security come on yeah so um i hope that the pentagon report at least has something in it that that gets through to congress to say all right we need to earmark some more money for this or reopen a tip or whatever continue uh, researching this look into this a little bit more i hope one of these fucktards in congress gets a, a sparklet in their ass and goes like, mm. let's go for this. Let's, let's, let's make this happen. This is important. Like, I hope that the Pentagon doesn't downplay it. That's all I'm saying. I hope they say it is necessary for us to continue to investigate this thoroughly. I hope they fire Jen Psaki and make her the director of this so I can just follow her a little closer. You know yeah, I mean? every, everything's hey. going to be, a, everything's going to be a circle back then. That's fine with me. What? Sir, she's going to have to circle all the way back. Hey, what? Well, I honestly, so. I don't have much much more on this, man. It was exciting. This is all exciting. And um, we're going to, we can tweet about this, tweet some of the uh, links to some of the interviews out there, tweet some of the links to the important articles, um, do stuff like that, get you guys caught up. But it's just good to, it's good to see your fucking face again there, Dutch. Your, your fucking face over your there. Your fucking face. Um, I, yeah. And I think, uh, we might actually, um, you know, when the Pentagon report finally does come out, maybe we'll, uh, circle back. We will circle back. We'll, we'll circle back and circle jerk the report. What? What? Um, it's very on that a- note. alien DNA everywhere. Yeah. Ugh. So, uh, I hope you guys, uh, this is an episode 99. 99er. For, uh, WNDR. Uh, we came back at you. I think we have some new music here. Um, and uh, you, we look forward to giving you another 99 episodes if we ever get our shit together. Uh, yeah. If you, if you want to sponsor us, that will go a long way to getting you a lot more and better content. It would. It would really help. So um, we would like to know what you think about this whole UFO, UAP, USO stuff. Uh, I mean, it's such a broad topic to discuss. I mean, we can only do so much in an hour. So tell us what you think or what you thought. Um, try to talk some sense into the mascot for us. Um, and uh, you can do that at with no due respect at gmail.com. You can uh, tweet us at WNDR podcast. You can uh, DM us at with underscore no underscore do underscore respect. And uh, you can uh, what's that? Th- what's the new thing the kids are doing? The Reddit. Yeah, Reddit subreddit. You, you can Reddit us at I think what is it was at WNDR podcast.